What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a Linux powered gaming console and for the operating system we're going to be using SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. Now usually when I do a video like this I'll do a small form factor build, but recently MSI released an awesome little PC known as the Mag Trident S5M. As you can see it's not much bigger than the Xbox Series line of consoles and actually with the standoff it is smaller than the X. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of this console style PC. I love the form factor and I recently did kind of a first look review of it. It does come out of the box running Windows and it also comes with this MSI controller. If you're interested in seeing how this thing performs with Windows, I will leave a link for that video in the description. But for this one here, I'm gonna be installing SteamOS 3, actually the same exact operating system that's running on the Steam Deck right now. And in turn, we're gonna transform this console sized PC into a new Steam machine. So like I mentioned, I really do like the design of this. It's actually super easy to get into. It's powered by a Ryzen 7 5700G, and they're really pushing, you know, cloud gaming and mobile gaming on this with their new apps they have installed with Windows. But there's nothing really stopping us from installing Linux on this unit. All I really need to do is either add a 2.5 inch drive here, or just replace the M.2 SSD, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. There's a single screw on the back of the unit, and this all slides out. We can easily access our hard drive bay, our M.2, and our RAM. And as you can see, it's got a pretty beefy cooler for being such a thin system. Now, when it comes to the specs, this is using the Ryzen 7 5700G. They're also offering this with a couple different CPU variants or APU variants. You can pick it up with the 5300G or the 5600G, but we've got the higher end model here. And with that APU, it's got the built-in Radeon 8i GPU up to 2000 megahertz. This system also has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. We also have Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. And when it comes to the drive I'm using for Linux, I've just installed a one terabyte Western Digital NVMe SSD. I've just left the standoff so we can put it in the horizontal position. It does come with a few rubber feet that you can put on the bottom. And it also comes with this MSI controller, but since we're running SteamOS, I figured I'd go ahead and use a Steam controller here. And, uh, you know, I'm actually not really used to using the Steam controller, especially for racing games, but let's go ahead and boot this up. It does have RGB up front here, and in Windows you can control it. Unfortunately, in Linux, I just can't control this RGB. I wish there was kind of a physical switch that would allow me to at least change the colors. There's actually a couple ways you can go about installing SteamOS 3, and what I'm using here is known as Hollow ISO. I've done a couple videos showing you how to install it, but since then they have updated it and it's a lot easier to install now. I'll leave a link to their GitHub in the description, they explain everything over there. But it does work out really well, especially on AMD hardware. And on this PC, everything seems to work right out of the box. I didn't have to do any configuration for the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to work. It does come with an Intel chip, so it's working right out of the box. We've got our Steam overlay, we've got our performance overlay, and if I head over here to settings, you can see that we've got that 5700G, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that Radeon 8i GPU. And this is actually going to be running at 65 watts, so we can get some real good clocks on the CPU and the GPU at the same time. If you wanted to do some overclocking with the 5700G, it does pull a lot more power, but at 65 watts, it can sustain those clocks on both the GPU and the CPU side of things. With this operating system, we do have system-wide FSR. Unfortunately, the TDP control and the manual GPU control here doesn't work with these APUs, but we can use the performance overlay, known as Mango HUD, so we can see everything that's going on with the PC while we're gaming. And another thing that works that comes in really handy is that system-wide refresh rate switcher. So if you've got a higher end game and you can only run it at about 40 FPS, we can go ahead and lock the whole system to 40 FPS with that game. And of course, going into this, I'm trying to come up with a console style device, but we do have desktop mode, just like we do on the Steam Deck, so you can use this as a full-fledged Linux PC. So if you did need to get some work done, you can do it right here in desktop mode. We've got the Discover Center here. We can go through, download more apps if you want to get a photo editor or something like that. But where this little setup really does shine is emulation. And we'll take a look at at least GameCube or Wii and PS3 by the end of this video. You can set this up to launch it directly from Steam Deck UI or from Steam. It's really up to you. And media playback on this device is great. By the way, this is a 1440p 144Hz monitor. And right now I did want to show off a little bit of 4K60 playback from YouTube. Stats for nerds up in the top left hand corner. But when it comes down to it, this 5700G handles media playback really well. 
You can do streaming from your favorite apps or native playback from an internal or external hard drive. So yeah, when you're not in gaming mode, you can always swap over to the desktop. But we're really here for gaming, and I've got a bunch of PC games that we're going to be testing out. I've also added a few emulators directly to Steam, and we can launch them from here. There's tons of ways to go about this, but in this video, we'll be testing out some Wii and PS3 at the end of the video. But with all that out of the way, let's see how this performs with Linux gaming, and we'll just go with Injustice 2. Alright, here's Injustice 2 at 1080p low with no FSR. Uh, we do have system-wide FSR, but it's not on here. It's running really well like it sits. Not bad at all, and from any of these games, we can always access the menu here. Go to Exit, and it'll bring us right back into the Steam Deck UI, or Gamepad UI. It makes it really easy to just use everything with a controller, and let's go ahead and test something else. Next up, we've got Project Cars 2 at 1080p low. Looking really good here. It is a playable experience, but I'll tell you what, I'm having a really hard time playing racing games with the uh, Steam controller. This is really crazy. This is the first time I've ever tried to play a racing game with it, and I really need to spend a few days with it just to get used to it. So I've got a couple more games to test, and then we'll move into some emulation. I'm just going to let these play out. Got about 20 seconds of gameplay for each of them. So one thing you got to keep in mind is we're working with Vega graphics and when it comes to the Steam Deck, it actually does have a more powerful GPU, but this CPU will walk all over that Steam Deck CPU right now. This has 8 cores, 16 threads, and we've got a max clock up to 4.6, so emulation is absolutely amazing on this setup. Here we have Wii using the Dolphin emulator at 1440p, and this system is capable of running this emulator at 4K. I've just got a 1440p monitor here. Got that Vulcan back end going, and we're at full speed. So when it comes to emulation on this system, you've got PSP, you've got Dreamcast, there are some Xbox games that are going to work really well. Even Yuzu for Switch works great at 720p on the 5700G. And even with these emulators, we can press that menu button, we can exit right back into the Steam Deck UI. PS3 is fully playable on the 5700G, even in Linux here. Looking really good here with Skate 3, using the Vulcan back end. Now when it comes down to it, there are some harder to emulate games for the RPCS3 emulator that might struggle a bit, but something like Skate 3 does require higher clocks, more cores and threads, and as you can see it's running at full speed with that Vulcan back end. So overall, running SteamOS 3 on this system does work out really well. I didn't have to do any kind of modifications for the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything else to work. We've got sound out of HDMI, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, everything functions very, very well. Of course, I would love to see a little more power with a dedicated GPU and a form factor like this, but right now with the 5000 series APUs, we're kind of still stuck on Vega, so maybe next generation with the newer APUs based on RDNA 2 or RDNA 3 coming out, we'll see little PCs or consoles console size PCs like this that can handle most everything at 1080p. Even if it was medium settings, I'd be totally fine with that. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I did have a few people asking about checking out Steam Deck OS on this thing, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick one. If you're interested in learning more about this or checking out my initial review video, I'll leave a link for that in the description along with links to MSI's website. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this console size PC, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, Thanks for watching.